everybody, it's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for my February's Diversify Me. So I finally came up with a name and it is Diversify Me. This happened by accident because I was making a thumbnail and that's what I put on the thumbnail. And then Amy from Ducky Reads over on Instagram commented and was like, hey, you have your name. So that's what we're calling it, which is awesome. I finally have a name. But basically this is the game that I play at the end of every single month and it is a way of tracking my reading and making sure that I am in fact diversifying how I read and what I read. So I have a number of different things that I'm trying to diversify my reading with. I have a board and I give myself points or lines and eventually I reward myself when I end up filling up all of the bottom with magnets which signifies that I was quite diverse in my reading. The two things that are really important that I diversify is that I am always reading at least one LGBTQIA plus book so with LGBTQIA plus rep of some description and always reading a book by a BIPOC so black indigenous or person of color author. As long as I have at least one book that represents each then I am okay. Um, if I don't, then I have to remove a magnet from my little spot where I have all the magnets. The rest of the things are extra points that I get for my diversity and yeah, different things like whether I am reading graphic novels, short stories, just diversifying the way that I read as well as what I read. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through the board. We're going to talk about the books and then we're going to come back over here and then I will actually do my stats for you as well because I do have all my monthly stats written down in my book journal but I have decided not to do that at the end of my wrap up rather I will do it in this video because the wrap ups tend to get quite long and this video is a lot shorter so that is what we're going to do today so let me just reposition you so that you can see the board I should just actually add before I do that that Kaz from Cats and Camera did recommend that I put up the books next to the board so you can see what I'm talking about. I thought that was a really great idea so I think that's what I'm going to do. So yeah that's what I will do. There you go. <laughs> All right let's get into a different position. Okay first book that we're going to talk about is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. So Agatha Christie is or was a white woman so definitely not BIPOC author. There is no LGBTQIA plus rep in there so no line there. There is no neurodiversity anywhere so again no line. It does not feature anything to do with physical or mental health rep. Not written by an Australian Aboriginal author. I read it in its original language so nothing for translated. It's not a comic, graphic novel or manga. Not a book of poetry, nor is it written in verse. It is not a short story. I did not read it as an advanced reader copy or arc. And it's set in Egypt, but given the topic, the, the characters and the author, then I would not count it as being not set in the global west. So no lines for the first book. The second book is Frost Heart by Jamie Littler. Jamie Littler is an English, white English author, so no lines for BIPOC. There is no LGBTQIA plus rep. I would definitely not say there is any neurodiverse rep. Doesn't really touch on mental or physical health rep. Jamie Littler is not an Australian Aboriginal author. I read it in its original language as well, so nothing for translated. It is not a comic, graphic novel or manga. Not a book of poetry, nor is it written in verse. Definitely not a short story. I didn't read it as an arc and it is set in a non-global west environment but it's a fantasy world and Jamie Littler lives and gets his inspiration mostly from the global west so nothing for that. The next book that I have is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. As far as I am aware Alexis Hall is a white author so nothing there. Boyfriend Material features a queer romance so a line there. There is no neurodiverse rep. Um, yeah 
yeah, look, I think that it does feature quite a lot of mental health reps, so I'm going to give myself a line for that one. Alexis Hall is not an Australian Aboriginal author. I read it in its original language. It's not a comic or graphic novel. Not a book of poetry, nor is it written in verse. Not a short story. I didn't read it as an arc, and it's set in the UK, so definitely not in the global west. The next book that I have is... Whale Rider by Witi Imahira. Witi Imahira is a Maori author from New Zealand, so that is a line for BIPOC. So thank goodness I have now gotten a line for BIPOC and a line for LGBTQIA+. So I won't have to have negative magnets uh, for myself, but anyway, there is no LGBTQIA+, rep, no neurodiverse rep, I wouldn't say there's physical or mental health rep. He is not an Australian Aboriginal author, however. It is not translated. It was originally written in English, and that's how I read it. It is not a comic, graphic novel, or manga. It is not a book of poetry, nor is it written in verse. Not a short story. I don't think it's short enough to technically count as a short story. It is not an arc, or I didn't read it as an arc. And it is set in New Zealand, so not set in the Global West. I mean, it is set in the Global West. Then we have A Splendid Ruin. Megan Chance is not a BIPOC author. There is no LGBTQIA plus rep. Not neurodiverse. There is some mental health rep, but I'm not really sure how, yeah, how great the rep is. So I'm actually not going to give myself a line for that. She is not an Australian Aboriginal author. I read it in its original language, so nothing for translated. It's not a comic or graphic novel or manga. Not a book of poetry nor is it written in verse. It's not a short story. I didn't read an arc and it's set in San Francisco, so not set in the global west. Next up is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. Kimberly Lemming is a BIPOC author, so that's another line there. There's no LGBTQIA plus rep, no neurodiverse rep, no physical or mental health rep. She is not, however, an Australian Aboriginal author. I read it in its original language, so nothing for translated. Not a comic or graphic novel. Not a book of poetry or written in verse. Not a short story. I did not read it as an arc. And I still don't think it classifies as the last one because Kimberly Lemming is an American author as far as I'm aware. And then the final book is Electra by Jennifer Saint and... There is nothing that this one can be given a line for either. None of those things apply. So that's it. That's all my books. But I have managed to get three lines in a couple of rows there. So I'm going to give myself a magnet for BIPOC author. I'll pop this pretty magnet just there. And I'm going to give myself a magnet for physical and or mental health rep. So I'm going to pop this pretty magnet just there. So that's very exciting. All right, and I'll reposition you again so that we can discuss the stats for February. Okay, so February's stats. Got my journal, find the correct page. Okay, so in February I read seven books. I have included with my pages read, I have included the half of A Strange Hymn by Laura Thalassa, which I have read, and also about 100 pages of Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I also have read. But I'm not including those in the books read because I haven't finished them. So seven books read, 2,412 pages read. Now for ratings, I have both Corpile and Star. Corpile is the rating system that was created by G from Book Roast and I will link her channel in the description below. So I use Corpile to figure out my rating. It automatically converts it into a star rating for us. So my average rating on Corpile for the month was 7.69. My average star rating was 4.14. And then we have a breakdown of the format. So I had four physical books that I read. Ebooks, there were two, and audiobooks, one. In terms of some of what we were just talking about, I had one LGBTQIA plus book, I had two BIPOC books, nothing by an Australian Indigenous author, and nothing translated, and no arcs. For a breakdown of how the star ratings were attributed, I had no one star, I had no 1.5 star, no two star, 
no 2.5 stars. Two of the books that I read I gave three stars, didn't give any 3.5, one four star, two 4.5 stars and two five stars. So a really fantastic reading month. For genres we had one fantasy, two historical fiction, two romances, one magical realism and one mystery. So just the one fantasy this month which is interesting. For category I read two books that were middle grade, no books that were young adult and five books that were adult. And then I do actually have some uh, YouTube information as well. So on the 1st of February, I forgot what month I was talking about. The 1st of February I had 1,066 subscribers and on the last day of February, on the 28th of February, I had 1,084 subscribers. So I gained 18 subscribers throughout the month, which isn't too bad. For watch hours, I started the month with 3,885 and I ended the month with 4,048, which is very exciting because it means I can now be monetized. I do need to actually do some paperwork, well, online paperwork for that to happen. So it's not happened yet, but at some point I will look into doing that. But yeah. Those are all the stats. That is how my Diversify Me game has gone. So that's everything I needed to talk to you about in the video. Please comment below if you have any thoughts on anything that I talked about. If there was anything that you noticed about the books that I did not take into account, that I didn't include when I should have done, please comment that below and I will fix it accordingly. Please comment any other thoughts that you might have had. What was your favourite book of the month? What book did you give the highest rating? Let me know all of that down below in the comments. If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then again, leave me a smiley face because we are giving out smiley faces. All of my social media details are listed in the description below. So if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.